Welcome everybody. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes until I see more people joining us and then we'll kick it off. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. We've got a few people on, and I know more will join us, but welcome everybody. It's just great to have you here for this webinar brought to you by the Vanderbilt Travel Program in Orbridge, um, our tour operator who will be presenting today. I'm Carrie Allen, director of the Vanderbilt Travel Program. It is so good to have you all with us. This is a fun way for us to do things, to, to be with you, um, even though we can't be with you and to talk about travel and all those things we look forward to in the future. We've got with us Clay Krebs, who is my, our fabulous travel assistant, whom I'm sure all of you all have spoken to on the phone. Uh, Clay is in the background kind of prompting things as we go along. Then we have Caroline Johnston on the line, who is also making sure we all uh, stay together and, and do uh, the right things on the presentation. Mainly, our focus is going to be Ashley Perkins. Ashley Perkins is our sales rep from Orbridge. Ashley is previously at Tulane uh, as the travel coordinator at Tulane. And so I've known Ashley for years and was so delighted when she shifted over to Orbridge because now she can wear, literally wear two hats. She knows what's going on in the travel world with affinity groups, with universities, zoos, museums, and all that. And as well, she can also put her tour operator hat on and provide great service that she knows that we all are expecting. And if any of you have traveled to the World Bridge, you know how great it is. I will uh, point you to this wonderful picture of all of us. This is a Vanderbilt trip that I took. I'm in the very back with my hands up with the big VU uh, with a group that we had, I guess, about five years ago on the Southeast Alaska trip. We've got that trip again that Ashley will talk about. And uh, Ashley, I think with no further ado, I will kick it off to you. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you so much you guys for having me today. Um, I really appreciate being here. I love this picture, especially Carrie in the back such a, a lovely group from Alaska. Carrie and I actually um, did this tour as travel planners too, I think a couple years prior, or maybe a couple years um, after this. And we really, we talk about it as one of our most cherished, I think experiences ever. Um, so just moving on, I just wanna have a little bit of background of Orbridge. We were founded in 2007. Um, we were headquartered on a beautiful little island called Bainbridge Island. It's off the coast of Seattle. Um, we've been a tour operator. We are a tour operator for over 140 alumni travel associations. We also work with zoos and museums and a few other just small nonprofits. And um, we really pride ourselves in being able, being able to sort of curate experiences that those folks really want. Um, we really do try to listen to our travelers. We listen to our travel planners. Um, me coming over from Tulane sort of it's fun to have a seat at the table and really um, get to dig in and, and um, have some, some, some input on um, itineraries and properties and, you know, now even motor coaches. It's, it's amazing the kind of expertise that I've, that I've gained in this very strange year. Uh, I will say that we've been lucky to work with Vanderbilt sort of since the beginning. As I said, um, we were started in 2007. We've worked with Vanderbilt for over a decade. Um, my boss, who is the president, Jim Staples and Carrie are very close and um, confidants and we really do cherish that relationship. Um, just a few things about Orbridge. Um, we have a dedicated guest service team and, and a lot of times these folks are working around the clock to answer any questions that you have from sort of what footwear should I wear in Italy to um, what time should I arrive in Las Vegas to, to you know, to start the tour. Um, we have dedicated air agents that are also in-house in Bainbridge. Um, we do have a custom curated expedition library. You know, we really are educational travel. Um, we certainly have a whole lot of fun too, but we really do pride ourselves in the educational experience that we're, 
that we're getting and that we're gifting. So um, if you sign up by a certain time, a lot of times you'll see this on your brochure, you'll be sent an expedition library. And in some cases, some um, a wine subscription too, if you're visiting a vineyard in Italy. Um, we have dedicated travel directors and expedition leaders who are really just leaders in their field. And we're really proud of them as well. So I, Ashley, I, you know, Carrie, yeah. One second, I wanna jump in and say something that I meant to say as we were kicking this off, and that is, if you take your cursor and you go down to the bottom of the screen, you will see a little group of, of things that pop up, and one of them is Q&A. If you have questions during the, during the presentation, please submit those, and we will address those at the end of the presentation. But thank you, I meant to say that earlier on. No worries at all, yes, questions are important. Um, so I think Carrie, it was important for her and important for you guys, I think, to hear a little bit about the adjustments that we've we've made. I mean, as you know, our industry is facing probably the greatest challenge that we ever had, more so than 9-11, more so than wars, you know, more so than SARS. And we've really had to rise to it. Um, we've had to make adjustments quickly and thoughtfully. We've had to think about guest happiness and safety, you know, um, as two of the most important things. Those two things have really never been mutually exclusive. So um, it's been interesting and um, it's been so nice to be in a company that really listens and um, hears what the guests have to say and then pivots, you know, based on those, um, based on those thoughts and those conversations. And everybody has different levels of anxiety now. Um, and we're just really trying our best to um, to make everyone happy and comfortable, you know, and safe. So we've had enhanced experiences on our tour. I will mention um, during this time, so July through September, we've been able to operate six tours, three of our national parks tours and three of our Southwest national parks tours. We're really, um, we're really proud of that. You know, um, we really had to weigh weigh some things when we thought about sending these folks out and it really just came down to the fact that they wanted to travel and that we knew we could do it safely. Um, we had to certainly pivot, you know, for instance, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, that's a motor coach, a 56 seater motor coach. We had 10 folks on it. So in a lot of those cases, I mean, there were obviously smaller groups, but um, we had to get a couple of motor coaches. We, you know, we had to do it. You'll notice that there is, um, lots of seating in between the folks. You'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen that while inside, everyone was wearing face coverings. Um, among, you know, um, among these face coverings, you'll see, um, we've also, you know, it hasn't all been bad. We've had to go through these tours, obviously with a fine tooth comb and sort of take out the experiences that, or change the experience, modify the experiences that we, we thought were a little high risk. For instance, we had a lot of our lectures in our parks programs in the hotels, and we've moved those to outside, um, sort of under either, you know, at the, at the actual site. So for instance, we'll have at the, at, on our national parks tour, we have our lectures at the base of Mount Rushmore. You know, a lot of those things, I don't think we'll go back. Why would we want to be in a stuffy hotel conference room when we can be outside enjoying these beautiful, um, these beautiful sites and hearing from our lecturers. So, you know, we're really proud of that. And it's, it's caused us to really go through every single one of our tours, not just the tours I'll talk about today with a really just a different lens. Um, and we're proud of what we've been able to do. Um, also, we've heard from you guys that reservation flexibility and a fee-free cancellation was important, and we've been able to institute that. So guests may now cancel 30 days from reservation and receive a full refund, no questions asked, no time period waiting for your check. It'll be sent the next day. And then up until 90 days for departure, prior to departure, guests can cancel again without any fees, and you receive a $500 cash refund and a $350 future credit. Um, we find that that really just goes a long way with our with our travelers. Um, as you guys know, the news kind of changes every day. Um, we saw this wonderful uptick in reservations, particularly with our domestic programs when um, right around the election, I think when folks were talking about the vaccine, um, you know, it's obviously sort of to, started to drop off a little bit as the news has gotten worse. So we really just try to be as flexible as possible with people and just hear them out and understand and you know, if folks are calling us, they want to travel. So we want them to travel with us when they're the most comfortable. 
Am I missing anything on that, Carrie? Is there anything else you wanted me to talk about? Good. Okay. <laughs> I will, I will add, and I would add this at the end of the presentation, but I'll also say that the educational content on this is really a great, a great benefit to what we do when we choose our tour operators. As you know, one of the benefits of traveling with Vanderbilt is education from Vanderbilt professors. So as we go along, we don't always have the opportunity, especially domestically, to send a Vanderbilt professor. If we do, we will take this trip by trip and know and add as we are able to uh, with Vanderbilt restrictions involved. Right now, the faculty and staff are not allowed to travel. But as we go into 2021 and beyond, we hope to add that. Great. Thanks, Carrie. Um, so today I'll talk about three of our domestic tours, Southwest, Southwest National Parks, which is happening May 12th through 20th, Southeast Alaska, July 9 through 16th, and Yosemite Death Valley in the Great Parks of California, which is a new tour for us, which is happening in September, early September. Um, I think Carrie has been on a few of these. I know you've been on our National Parks Tour, and as I mentioned, Alaska. So as I said, feel free to please chime in if I miss anything, any of the highlights. Um, our Southwest National, Park, National Parks Tour is um, quickly becoming our most popular tour. It's definitely our most photogenic, as you'll see um, from this picture. Um, it just really is beautiful. Take you through a little bit. So if you'll notice this map, so you are fly, you arrive into Phoenix and then you'll end in Las Vegas. And I'll just mention that um, in years past, this has been a closed draw trip as opposed to an open. We used to end and begin in Las Vegas. And we really, again, had to look at this and say, how can we do this and have all the experiences not take away from the experience at all, but have folks be at a motor coach for less time. And this is how we figured out to do it. So now, as of today, this is by Deluxe Motor Coach, as I mentioned, maybe two or three motor coaches, depending on what the protocols are at the time. And um, you're only in a motor coach day at the most, I think two hours, sometimes two and a half hours, depending on the traffic. Um, so again, that's a pivot that we were happy to make and it really has made for some happy travelers and you know, nobody wants to be in a motor coach all day no matter what the scenery is. So um, some of the program highlights. So you know, I love this tour, not to mention it's just beautiful and, and the photographs that you can take are extraordinary but you're really hitting all of the iconic parks. You're seeing Grand Canyon, you're seeing Zion, Monument Valley, Bryce Canyon, one of the highlights that people talk about constantly is seeing annual Antelope Canyon at sunset. You know, we never want to use the words magical or life changing, but it's funny. Um, we sort of give each other a nickel every time somebody uses that. And they've said that that for whatever reason is, is life changing seeing Antelope Canyon at sunset. So um, one of the things that Orbridge does a really good job at is, is natural history. Um, we sort of pride ourselves in that and you'll see that a through line of that through all of the trips that I'm gonna talk about today. But I think our, another through line of this tour is our Native, is Native American culture, which I think is just a really, um, just exciting um, component uh, to this. You're gonna visit the Hoodoos in Bryce Canyon. You're gonna, um, we have a Navajo storyteller come join the group one night around a fire. Um, it's just a nice addition to a, a program that is just really so rich in American history. Um, one of the things that we are the most proud about um, of this tour, and I think that, um, as you know, as you guys know, I think national parks are just, you know, uh, forgive the slang, but they're just hot right now, right? I mean, um, everybody was home all summer. You really, you couldn't go abroad. So people were visiting national parks. And, you know, we love to see that, even if they weren't traveling with us, we were so pleased to know that they were being visited and those folks were getting business and um, you know, taking pictures and just really getting out in nature. But the thing that sets us apart from those, if you were gonna do this tour on your own or you were gonna use a travel agent is that we're staying, all of the hotels and lodges are inside of the park. Um, so in a lot of cases, we have to make these arrangements two and three years in advance in order to, to have them for our groups. You know, we're going to all peak season dates where the weather is, is the best. So we, are, you know, we have to do this quite a bit in, a, in advance. Um, so let's see. So I just want to go through the inclusions. We do try to be all inclusive. It's eight night accommodation. So you'll have eight breakfast, three lunch, and four dinners. 
um, expedition leaders and expert local guides. So I just want to mention a little something about our ELs, our expedition leaders. The majority of them are former park rangers, um, which is just really neat. They're either um, sort of nearing retirement or just sort of want to do something on the side. And they've lived and worked in these parks really for all their lives. Um, so they really just offer a really neat, unique perspective. Um, our mission and park fees are also included. Itinerary, deluxe motor coach, as I mentioned, all your luggage porters, you'll never have to carry your luggage anyway, anywhere, um, and all gratuities. And I, you know, I mentioned that because we found that, especially when you're abroad, but even, you know, even now, gratuities are sort of this anxiety point. You know, you never really know how much to, to, to tip someone or to tip at all or what's appropriate. We take care of all that for you. And of course, airport transfers. Um, these are just some of the properties that we have visited. Scottsdale Marriott, the Masswick Lodge, people love. It's just right on the canyon's edge. Golding's Lodge, as I mentioned, I mean, you can just, this is from the view, you know, from the hotel, these spectacular, spectacular views. There's a few more. And then I will say, you know, this has been really popular as well, this um, optional Mohab and Mesa Verde pre-tour. Um, it's four nights, four breakfasts, one lunch, and it's just really lovely, as you'll notice this beautiful picture um, on the side. We, I mean, at least 70 to 80% of the folks that are booking this tour right now are also booking this. And also some people are booking it on their own. Um, they just want to do the pre-tour. They're interested in Mohab and, and, and Mesa Verde, which has been interesting to us. But um, as I get, national parks are, are hot. Um, did I miss anything for that, Carrie? No? Okay. Um, I'm sure you might have some input on um, on Southeast Alaska. I think this picture actually was taken when Carrie and I were there. Um, so, I, you know, we were joking before the uh, before the presentation started that um, whenever a whale breaches, there's never a, ah, there's never not that you know that reaction. It's it's pretty fun. Um, so let me just show you this really quick. Um, so if you'll look at the maps me really quick. You'll see we're Juno to Sitka. Um, and you're really going you through all of this inside passage you'll see on the right top of your screen. And, um, and, and as I do mention, um, that really this trip is very culturally immersive, but I think Carrie that you'll agree it's really mostly about the wildlife, right? Um, it's a small ship. Um, it's only 76 passengers. Um, I will mention that we've upgraded the ship. So we were in the Admiralty, Admiralty Dream for years and years. This year we'll be um, in the Chichagoff Dream, which is actually the top of their fleet. Slightly larger, but still definitely considered an expedition style um, vessel. It is 76 passengers, as I mentioned, um, lots of room for alfresco experiences. We are hearing from people that that's important to them. Um, you can up on the top deck where you're wildlife viewing, you can also have cocktails up there. You can eat your meals up there if you'd like to. So lots of time to be outside and in your cabin and still away from people if, if you so choose. Let's see. Can you guys see that? No, maybe not. I think this might just be a whale breaching too. Sorry about that. Oh. Sorry about the video. I thought I would be able to play it, but again, it's 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 a whale breaching, and I'll be happy to send it to you guys after because um, it's quite the sight. Um, like I mentioned, um, I think when Carrie and I were on this particular tour. It's extraordinary, we're on this small ship, we're right next to these glaciers. Um, if we see a bear, we follow it, you know? Sometimes on the ship, sometimes in a skiff. Um, if we see a pod of whales, we follow them. If they're breaching, if they're bubble net feeding, we stay there. I mean, sometimes hours, depending on what the guests want. Um, I think when we, when we go to a salmon hatchery, if the bears are there and they're catching the salmon, you know, we stay. Um, it's just, it's really a la carte. You can make this trip be anything that you want. One of the things that I really love about it is that it can be just as active um, as you want it to be. Every day, there's an opportunity to get off the boat um, and either go into the village and learn about the native um, culture or go on a hike. 
Um, and some days we'll have three different hikes. Some of those folks who just sort of want to take it easy and take some pictures, we'll have a guided hike for them. We have something called a fast and furious hike if you're interested in working off some of the breakfast. Um, so really it can be, like I said, just as active as you would like it to be. I, I think that that's one of the things that people do love about it. And you can sit in the lounge and have a cup of tea or a cocktail and watch eagles and bears and whales outside. Or you can go up on the deck with your binoculars and enjoy that cocktail as well. Um, again, all inclusive, seven breakfasts, six lunches, seven dinners, a captain's farewell, um, complimentary, complimentary wine and beer at dinner. Again, all on, on board lectures and educational guidance of the two naturalists. Um, guided kayaking, hiking, water, skip excursions, wildlife viewing. So all port fees, as I said, all of the um, gratuities for all of the leaders are included as well. Um, I don't think this is on here, but a polar plunge, should you choose to, is also, um, is also included. You'll dip into the, the freezing water, should you so choose. I, I did that, I was scared to death, but uh, it was fun times and you get a certificate, so. Um, here's just a couple of um, pictures of the inside of the ship. You'll notice there's a Himalayan salt cave. It's something that our previous ship did not have. It's known for its healing properties and a lot of folks take advantage of that. It's also warm. Um, a dining room, and then you'll notice a category A, which is two single beds, and then the deluxe main suite up on the top deck with a queen bed, which can be separated. Um, again, we have an optional Denali National Park pre-tour, also very popular, especially these days. And again, people are booking this on their own. If they're not interested in being on a ship, they just want to do Denali. Denali's been getting a lot of buzz as well. Um, you can opt to do this as well. Anything, Carrie? You're muted. No, you yes, go. I just want to say <laughs> before we thank you before we leave um, Southeast Alaska. One of my my greatest um, one up, I guess, would be the best best way to say it was when we were all on the deck and we were looking at these bubble feeding whales, and as Ashley said. They don't move until those whales are finished feeding. And that is when they spin, they go up, they capture the fish because the fish are disoriented in the spin. They all go up, they get their food and they come back down. They did it repeatedly. It was one of the most unique opportunities to see wildlife in action that I've ever witnessed. As I looked to my left, way off yes. in the distance, I saw this enormous yes. yeah. princess or celebrity i don't remember which cruise line it was but it went by and they never knew this was going on they never no had idea this experience and it was really a testament to the fact that we've got such a nice small ship with flexibility and the captains are always eager for everyone to see everything they can so i just thought i would say that just because it was a, a really a wonderful moment of understanding why that small ship was so important isn't that something? Yeah, I was going to mention that too. And I, you know, I forgot it slipped my mind because I tell that story all the time, how extraordinary that was. We were just it sitting really there was. drinking coffee and then, you know, yeah. just marveling. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty special trip. I just, I always set, tend to I tell my kids, you just breathe differently there. I, I don't know what it is. It's just expansive and, and beautiful. Um, but anyway, if anybody has any questions about that, I'm certainly happy to take them at the end. Um, so our last tour is Yosemite Death Valley in the great parks of California. We've been fine tuning this tour for quite, quite a while. Um, we did it a couple of years ago and it just wasn't what people were looking at. I think it was a little bit more San Francisco heavy and we were sort of, we just, it wasn't parks focused and that's what people want is the parks. Um, we, we had the addition of Death Valley, which is just really like a fascinating place. Um, we only visit it in the spring and fall, obviously not in the summer for, for obvious reasons. I think it just hit a record last week for, you know, the hottest temperature on record, which is interesting. Um, Yosemite is one of the most visited parks in the U.S., especially um, people love seeing El Capitan, and you'll see that as well. Um, Kings Canyon and Sequoia are also beautiful. Let me just go on to the next. Yeah, you're gonna visit Badwater Basin. Anybody who's really interested in topography or geology is really gonna love this tour. Again, we have our ELs that are former, former park rangers um, that are with you every step of the way. Um, 
we have a lot of biology people, folks who are interested in sort of enthusiasts. Um, there's a lot about amphibians and reptiles on this tour. Apparently, um, there's a large expansive um, viewing of those as well. So as I mentioned, Sequoia and Kings Canyon, just beautiful, but all really beautiful in different ways. Let's see, again, all inclusive. Um, And I wanna to mention too, all of these tours that I'm talking about today are small group. Um, you know, Death Valley, we, we cut it up. It's a 46 passenger max. I think we'll be comfortable. I think Carrie and I talked about really probably being in the high thirties, um, including ELs and maybe a host. So we really just want, want people to feel just comfortable and that they're getting these really curated experiences that they get to, um, that they get to experience with folks that they are comfortable with. Again, all inclusive, everything that you'll see here. And here's a couple of the, the lodges that we'll stay in. Again, all within the parks, same as Southwest Parks. We've had to, to get these quite a few years in advance. They're all in the park. You walk right outside and take as many pictures as you want. So. And then we have an optional Monterey to Santa, Santa Barbara post tour also been very popular to us. Anybody who's ever been in this area of the world knows that it's especially lovely um, in the spring and fall. So, and lastly, just wanted to offer this to everyone. For everybody who watches this or came or um, anybody really who calls us before December 30th or gives Carrie a call or Clay, we're gonna save $125 per person. And that's that's really our um, our past traveler discount. So any of you folks who have traveled with Orbridge before and are already a past traveler will get this discount on top of it. Um, so if you're filling it out online, you would just note Vanderbilt travel preview in the additional form, but you can just also tell Carrie or Carrie will know or Clay um, that you guys were on it to receive a discount. And that's it. Thank you all so very much. Um, if y'all have any questions, I'm certainly happy to take them. So we don't have any questions in our inbox right now. Okay. And, uh, but I would love it if people would submit some, uh, <laughs> just at the, again, at the bottom under the Q and A. And if you don't, we've done a really good job of giving you the overview of what goes on. I, I really think that I will just endorse Orbridge for the quality of their domestic, all their, all their programming is fantastic, but they were really, some of the first that came up with good domestic programming. We have more in 2021 and in 2022 to offer. We just felt like these were the three um, hottest or most uh, looked after programming that we have. So anytime that you want to uh, you know, go on a domestic program, look to us to provide this for you and to Orbridge, because I feel like we've got what you want. And there are other parks uh, trips, again, that I was saying earlier that they do that are excellent too. So well, thank you, Carrie. It, yeah, all It's almost like you had a crystal ball, a crystal ball for 2021, you know, knowing. I, <laughs> I know. Well, I just know that people, as they have been all over Europe and maybe don't want to do that again, they also need to look at what's beautiful in the United States and we've got a lot of it. So I like to say, you know, we've got a hop. A cute. Uh, okay. What will the temperatures in the Southwest in May be like? So they'll be temperate, I would say. You know, like I said, we always get peak season dates. They're going to be, it's chilly at night. It is, you know, 70s, 75, ah. sometimes low 80s during the day, but it does kind of get down. Sometimes it can get down to the, um, to the low, the low 50s, high 40s in the evening time. So then we had um, a question about Liz Meadows. Sorry, Liz, uh, you've arrived late and you want to hear more about the Southwest Parks. We are happy to A, talk to you about it, and B, yes, this will be recorded for you to access at any time. And we will be processing that within the next couple of days, probably available to you on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, and we will also posted on our website. So yes, we will have that. Um, you're welcome. 
And so it's not real hot is the answer. No, it's not real no, hot. No, it's not real hot. I'm more concerned about the cold and everything being a southerner. <laughs> but, exactly. Yeah. Well, we had our share in Alaska, didn't we? We did. And, and let me yeah. also go back, <clears throat> excuse me, to Alaska and say that um, one of the things we did this year, particularly, uh, is, is make sure this trip is in July because it honestly it starts getting a little chilly. We went on our informational trip in August, late August. Yeah. It was starting to get cold. It was. Rainy. Remember? It was cold. But if you yeah. go in July, which is what we've got, it's really peak time to go. Beautiful. It's not, it's cold, but it's not, it's not like 50s. 50s i'd say yeah 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 it's lovely and um culturally that trip is so interesting because of norwegian influence and the european russian influence mm -hmm. it's very interesting as well as the inuit and the uh clinkett in yeah so all good all of these trips are wonderful Thank any you. other questions no other questions um ashley if there aren't any more questions, I guess we'll close it out. You can always email me too, Carrie, and it will get, if you want to just forward them along to me, I'll get right back to them today. We if will there's do any that. afterwards. Exactly. And we'll be sending this out to everyone too, um, as far as if those that were not able to join us today, because we did not have, I'll ask questions. Look at that, somebody. Um, when can we cancel if we book? You address that. Would you go over that again? Ashley? Sure. So you can cancel 30 days from the date of reservation to get all of your money back. Um, no questions asked. Like I mentioned, um, we'll send you a check the next day. And then the reservation grace period. So up until 90 days before departure, you can still cancel fee free um, and you'll get a check for $500. And then 350 of that deposit will be used as a future travel credit. You've got a period of time there of about 60 days. That, yeah. or, or not 60 days, uh, but period when you make your booking and, and before the final payment is yeah. due, it's a, little, it's a little less of a refund, but no more, but you're still making another promise to exactly. money towards another trip. Okay. Got and it. look, this, the, you know, the, flex, the grace period, the 30 days from date of reservation, you know, it was previously seven, uh, as with a lot of our, you know, our constituents, our, our competitors, um, previously seven days you had to sort of change your mind. And you know, we heard from you guys that we, we had to change it and it makes so much sense. And, and we've been seeing cancellations, you know, the news says one thing the one day and one thing the next. And it's funny, we'll, we'll get a booking, we'll get a cancellation and then inevitably they'll book again, you know? So, and then it starts all over. Okay, well, Clay and I are always here to answer questions too, believe it or not, even though we're remote. We are answering questions, answering emails, doing all that that stuff from our homes. And uh, Ashley, it's been great. Ashley's been on the road, actually seeing lots of different travel planners talking about 22. Be sure everyone that you reference our website to see updates on these trips and all our other trips. We are soon to post our 2022 trips. And anything that was a carryover from 20, um, depending on where we're going, it could actually be carried over, as you know, to 21 or to 22. So we do have um, lots of mashup with that going on, new trips and then trips that you may have seen on the programming before. So we're following all this very closely. We feel good about the vaccine. We feel good about where we're going. I think we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and I really appreciate everybody joining us today because it shows that you are interested in going, which we know. So Ashley, thanks for taking time to do this and doing the presentation. Thanks for having me. It was great. Thanks to Caroline for keeping us on track and for Clay for making sure I was on track. And <laughs> if we are done, we're done and we hope to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thank y'all. Happy holidays. <laughs>